So recently I've been playing around with the geometry nodes in Blender and I have to say, I'm very impressed with it. It's amazing what you can do with it. It basically creates a lot of procedural stuff. You have parameters. And I was actually able to create this procedural building from scratch. Like uh, it has animation and has everything. And it is procedural, meaning it has all these parameters you can adjust, like all of this stuff, even like materials, animation. And that's what I'll go over in this video. So it's not a tutorial, but uh, it's just me showing you what I have here, kind of walk you through all that stuff. And you can download this for free by going to the description of this video, click on the link there and you can download it, play with it, use it in any of your projects if you want. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do in this video. But before we get to it, I wanna quickly mention uh, the new partnership we made with Blue Effects. So our friend Zillard, who runs Blue Effects, he's been a good friend of the channel. Uh, he's been on our podcast. We've become great friends. And he put together an amazing package for you guys to where he takes basically all of his top courses, tools, templates, and more into one bundle. It's basically an amazing deal. It's like almost like 20,000 worth of stuff for a fraction of the price. I think it's like almost 98% off. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check it out. The link to it is at the bottom of this video or just simply go to ukramedia.com slash blue effects. So let's talk about geometry nodes. Again, a geometry nodes is somewhat of a new feature in Blender. And uh, like if you take geometry nodes and then Blender EV and even like the Acid browser that something recently was added to Blender, I mean, just those alone, I mean, Blender is starting to look more like a MoGraph tool and that's extremely exciting. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with it. Uh, I love EV from the get-go. I mean, the fact that you can render stuff quickly is amazing. But now with the geometry nodes, it's unreal. And they're adding things to it more and more. And I just saw they added uh, an extrude uh, node, which is super, super handy. So anyway, so let's talk about this. So by the way, let me start from scratch. I'm going to open up a new, uh, like a new blender. This is what the default looks like. I'm going to split it. I do love the new acid browser. So yeah, there you go. It's this one right here. And uh, I have some files in the user library here. So I have the building. So I'm going to get rid of this. Let's go into material preview and I'm going to just drag it in. I mean, it's amazing that you can drag things in quickly like this. You can go and kind of zero everything out. So this is what the building looks like when you first bring it in. As you can see, not that exciting, but then you go to the uh, modifiers tab in here. And I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah, modifier properties. So in here you can adjust like the size X, Y, Z. You can make them small and then you have like the roof. You can make it like super thick and then like bring it in to maybe like make it a custom looking roof. That looks legit. And then uh, you have other things like a divider. So you can make them super wide. Basically it's those things, so you can customize them. Then you can do the same thing, kind of bring them out some, that's a little too much. So maybe something like this. Yeah, it's looking cool. So essentially you can create custom looking buildings by just pulling on these. You can make walls that are wider, skinnier, and then on the Y, you can make them super long, super short. And then you have windows, you make them like tiny, or you can do the same thing on the Y, make them tiny, long. And the cool thing about this window, especially at the bottom, when you adjust the Y, well, not the wall, but the window, notice the door actually sizes with it. So that's super cool, even for the offset. So if you move the window, you can see the door goes with it, the handle, I mean, it's, it's so fun creating that stuff in the uh, geometry nodes because to me, I come from the coding background, especially with the uh, expressions and After Effects. The fact that you can do it with nodes and you can calculate all the, you know, the distance and stuff. I mean, it's so much fun to me. Okay, so that's Windows. And then again, the same thing you have for like the door, you can make it skinny. You can also adjust the size of the handle as you can see right there. And let's see what else you have a frame. You can make it longer, shorter. You can also do the width, make it skinnier. So definitely a lot of parameters. And even this base right here, you can adjust the size of it and you can add more. This is just something I, you know, the basic stuff I was able to add just to like the essential stuff that I needed just to see if I can even do it. So then, you know, that's just the parameters. And then you can go to the bottom here. You can adjust the material. So you can say the roof, maybe I want something like different color. You can pick any color you want for any of them, like the frames. You can give them a different color, the door. So that's nice. So you can do all of this on the fly, no problem. But I'm going to undo everything. Let's go back to the basics. So materials, 
That's nice. Then you have animation, which is super exciting. So right now it's set to zero. So it goes between zero and one. When it's zero, it's off, one, it's on. Essentially, this is like a checkbox. So they don't have a checkbox button. So instead, right now it's set to zero, which we don't have any animation. But if you set it to one, or if you slide it to one, it doesn't really matter. Now you'll see that nothing is happening because we haven't adjusted here. So you can say starting frame is gonna be zero, that's good. Duration, how long you want the animation to be. I want it to be like 30 frames, that's awesome. Then the fall off, we'll talk about that here in a second. But then you have like the location. So you want like, let's start with the scale. So we have scale minimum, scale maximum. We have rotation minimum, rotation maximum, and so on. So basically this is when it arrives, like the end of the animation. This is the beginning of the animation. So you can say, I want everything to be at zero on scale, X, Y, and Z. So if I preview this, you can see it just scales in like this. So that's nice. Maybe, maybe I want for the X, Y, Z, Z to be maybe like five in scale. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's do like four. Not that one. Okay. So if I preview this, you can see it gives you something like a really interesting effect, kind of like things sliding in. So that's awesome. Then maybe you want to add some rotation. Then you can say, hey, rotation, let's do Z rotation, maybe like 90 degrees. So now they're going to spin in on Z. So that's awesome. You can do location minimum. You can say maybe let's start at the very top. So maybe kind of drops in with all those other parameters. So anyway, sky is the limit what you can do with this. And uh, you can, at any point you can turn it off and then the animation is gone. You can keep editing it. Now, this is just like the stuff that you can kind of make available as like an asset. You can bring thing, things in, you can put them everywhere you want to, you know, you can pull things in and these things snap. You can snap them on the surface. So if I bring in like a, let's do like a cube. Where is it at? Where did it go? There you go. We have a cube. So if I bring this in and I want to put something on top here, I can just bring it in and it will snap to the top. You can scale things. I mean, it's amazing. I love the asset web browser. It's super handy. So let me undo all of this. Now, I'm going to go back to geometry notes here for a second. So we have this. Let's go into the building and uh, let's see. Home. Boom. So we, we have something like this. I also just, I was just playing around. I'm like, what if I wanted to generate uh, like a new building each time I bring it in. Like I, I don't want to be cost, like a constantly adjusting, creating a custom looking building. I wanted to generate a random building for me without me doing it every time. So I created this like, um, I guess you can call it a group to where, let me basically do this. It, it, it will generate like a random variables. And I did set some like uh, parameters, basically like the minimum value, maximum value, like give me the size between two and seven. So I have like a maximum Y or X, Y, Z. So basically I, I will kind of get rid of this up to, let's do window, I think, yeah. So, and then I will connect these like this. You can also hold this and shift that and press F and you, you can kind of connect it like that quickly. So essentially what happens, you can play with the random seat and it will kind of give you whatever parameters you set. And uh, so, I mean, it comes in very handy for a lot of different reasons. So for example, you do wanna put this seed into like somewhere here so you can quickly adjust it. So you can duplicate your object and then give a random seed. So maybe, maybe I can do this. So I'm gonna duplicate this output or incoming, yeah, incoming. And we're just gonna bring this seed to right here, just bring it right, well, that's ID, let's do seed. There you go. And now it's available. And because of that, we have it in here. So here's what I can do now. So I can instantly select this and then press Shift D and duplicate it and press Y to kind of move it on Y. Shift D, duplicate this again, press Y to move it. And basically you can create as many as you want. But the cool thing about that, you can select this and then you can go and adjust the seed here. You can say, okay, let's give me a, a random looking one. Okay, that looks cool. Maybe not that one, hold on. So something like this, so you can instantly kind of play around with this. And again, I kind of have it based on um, like my own minimum maximum values, but you can go over here and you can determine, I basically said, hey, on the X, don't go higher than four, on the Y, don't go higher than five, and then on Z, don't go higher than 10. But you can adjust this all day long. You can move this around. I mean, I can definitely see this uh, come in very handy. So you can kind of position it anywhere you want to, something like this. Let me turn off snapping. Okay, so yeah you have something like this. You can also go and adjust materials, maybe like for this building, you want like the all levels, maybe instead of orange, maybe make make it something like uh, green like that. That's good. For this one, maybe we can reverse. So for all 
we'll say instead of orange, let's go blue. And for this one, instead of blue, we're going to go orange. And so now we have something custom in no time, and it still has the same animation. So if I preview this, well, animation's off, actually. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to turn on animation. So let's turn this on, and we already have the same animation. So let's turn this one on as well. Turn that on. Turn this on. Let's turn this one, and the same for that one. And so now if I preview this, you can see they all animate. You can offset them. So you can say, okay, this one, I want you to come in later. And I'm going to give it a different seat, so something bigger. So, yeah, that's good. So something like that is good. So I can say to this one, say I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go to animation. And I'm going to offset basically like the start frame. I'm going to say, hey, start at 5. And then maybe this one can start at 10. And then that one can start at like something like 15. And so now we created something interesting. Yeah, and, and you can give a different animation. Maybe you don't want to do, uh, maybe you just want to do nothing, no rotation for this one. So let's see what that one looks like. So yeah, you can play around with this. It's so much fun. Like procedural stuff, I love because uh, it takes time to create one. And then out of that one, it becomes like a cookie cutter that you can uh, kind of duplicate and play around with parameters and create something completely different and it doesn't require much effort. And I definitely see the future with um, geometry nodes. Again, I think Blender is definitely becoming like a MoGraph tool and I'm only scratching the surface with uh, geometry nodes. It's, it's amazing. I hear there's gonna be like a physics coming here, like particle system is gonna be included. I mean, it's just growing and growing and it's probably gonna go all over Blender. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, I love it. So far, I've had an amazing experience with it. I'm impressed and uh, I'm excited for what's to come. And, you know, notes is something we're all used to, especially like creating materials and things of that nature. So we already kind of know that. And especially if you're not used to with coding, you don't have to do any coding. Everything is node based. Yeah, I'm excited. So definitely check it out. You can, again, download the project file for free. All you need to do is just go to the description of this video, click on the link below, and definitely check out uh, the bundle that Zillard put together for us. Again, if you want to check it out, go to uh, ukrami.com slash effects or simply click on the link below. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.